think uh, immediately after the moratorium was announced, uh, we had uh, rolled it out for all the customers. We also had uh, on our website given an option to the customers for opting in. And in case somebody did not opt in and miss the payment, we were auto enrolling all the customers uh, into the moratorium. As of 31st March, there were approximately 8% of the customers, which is about almost about 800,000 who had enrolled for the moratorium. This number has gone up uh, in April to almost about 1.2 million. So about 12% of the customer as of now stand uh, uh, availing the moratorium. However, I would like to add one thing that uh, all those about eight uh, like customers who had availed the moratorium in March, 20 to 25% of them repaid the outstandings in April. So I think that's a different, completely different uh, phenomena that we are also seeing, that people though are availing it, but have also started repaying the outstandings. Also wanted to understand by how much do you see the average spends coming down, if at all, do you foresee that? And broadly speaking, what percentage of the credit card expenditure is derived from purchases of essential goods versus, uh, you know, discretionary items? A couple of things that have happened after the lockdown. One of them, immediately after the lockdown, there was this frenzy of buying. And we saw a huge amount of money being spent on the grocery department grocery and other things. Uh, the pantry services were actually being uploaded with huge amount of expenses. Uh, subsequently, the POS and other related transactions came down. However, we saw that the overall spends per day came down almost by one third. Uh, so uh, if we were doing approximately about 300 crores a day, it came down to about 100 crores a day. Uh, however, we are also seeing that after the 14th and the first lockdown was uh, lifted and the second was rolled out, we saw that there were some activity that started taking place. One of the most important thing was that uh, from almost about 45% of our uh, transactions, which are online, it shot up to 58%. And then uh, it continued and today we see that there are almost about uh, from the overall spends, average spend, we have reached a level of 60%. This is something which is very significant and the categories that uh, you asked for, one of them uh, most important is that uh, the grocery remains one of the largest category. The green zones, fast machines are open and people are spending over there. Online purchases are high. And second big category that we are seeing is uh, the utilities. There are a large number of people who are actually registering themselves for the utility. The direct marketing where the insurance and other services are there, as well as the education is another category that is showing a very, very strong rebound. I think if uh, 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 the way things are panning out, we feel that uh, in the next about five, seven days, we will reach a significant number. I think we are very upbeat about the kind of uh, online spends that is picking up. Has the outlook now on growth changed? I mean, if we take a look at the numbers, profits have grown 44% at CAGR over the last three years. And uh, this, of course, remains important to the company in order to really uh, you know, sustain that high P ratio of 35x. So surely you're not expecting customer acquisition at this point and spending to come back to pre-COVID levels for a couple of years. How does that change the outlook going ahead? One of the very important things to understand is if you look at the Q4 profit uh, and if you remove the provision, that is a very proactive measure that the company has taken just to ensure that if there are any losses, you have provided for it. If you remove ex-COVID impact, if one really looks at it, our, our profit for Q4 is 101% increase over Q4-19. I think that's very, very significant. It just goes on to prove that the fundamentals of the company are extremely strong in terms of the profitability, in terms of the sales, the spends and everything. Going forward, if you look at it, and I just mentioned to you that the spends have reached almost about 60% of the normal spend. And we are looking at almost, you know, all the major 
tier one cities in the metros right reeling under the COVID impact. And despite that, if we can see such a large uh, increase in the spends, I think I, I I think there is going to be a major shift in from cash to the uh, to the credit card. We are looking at two things. One of them is that people will start start spending uh, as the lockdown uh, is lifted. People start going to the market. The post will come back. The second is that, in our opinion, people are now becoming very very cagey to actually receive money back from anyone. So they don't want any. They either want to buy the full. It's if they if you're given you thousand rupees, I would not everything to be actually finished in that thousand. I think those are some of the things that we are looking at it, that people will start using the card more often than anything else. Uh, if you look at the, you know, the tap and go transaction where this you say that card not present, within the post transaction that is shot up to 22%. I think these are some of the signs that as the economy opens up, as things move, people will start using the card and there is a lot of cash that will move in. I, we are quite upbeat about the future of the credit card, and we feel that we should be in a position to actually do very good numbers even this year. Do you also see a heightened delinquency or NPA risk as well in the credit card segment? Uh, what's your overall asset uh, quality guideline as well going ahead, the kind of guidance you're uh, suggesting? Obviously, you know, uh, the provision that we have created is in anticipation that in case there will be some defaults, uh, we will be able to take care of it. There is a possibility that people, if they lose their job, uh, they might be not in a position to do it. Today, the company looks at everything very, very different, especially the you know this black swan event that has come up. And we have actually uh, always thought that presently, it is the servicing that is very important. And it is actually the life that is very important to be protected. So we are concentrating on those kind of things. In terms of all other things, I think we look at it that things will improve significantly and we will be able to go back to the business that we were doing very, very closely. In terms of the NPA, the credit culture, individual credit culture in India is very good. And I just mentioned to you that out of about 800,000 customers who had availed, 20, 25% have already repaid it. So there may be some increase in the uh, NPS, but we look at it from the perspective that uh, people will repay and people would definitely come back because they need to use a real credit, they need, they, they need to uh, use the credit card and all these things put together, even if there is stress, we should be in a position to manage it. I am not, uh, I, I'm not feeling, I don't feel that the NPS are going to a balloon or it's going to go up to uh, unmanageable levels. And finally, Mr. Prasad, how do you peg the use of credit cards versus UPI and other digital payments during this period? After the lockdown, obviously, you know, the, the feet on street came to a grinding halt. So there was no sales that, that took place. Despite that, in April, in, in April we did almost about 27,000 cards. It was more a carryover of what we had uh, in our inventory of March. But more importantly, we are seeing a major push coming up from the digital sources. If I look at the numbers from third onwards, and actually May, if you look at the May, it's, I mean, the, uh, uh, the interest that is coming in the credit card is phenomenal. Uh, the last number that I saw on, on uh, I think, uh, seventh or eighth, had almost about 15,000 people applying online. So there are two things that are going to be there. One is the business is going to be done in a different way. Uh, most importantly, the digital mode is going to be a prevalent mode. And for the last few years, the investment that we have made in the IT infrastructure and our digital assets, they are going to reap us and we are ready to go. The second is that actually you have a, we have a strong telecalling infrastructure the thousands of people sitting across India from our 12, 12 calling centers. And these tele-calling centers are very, very good. These are the ones which are going to drive the growth. With a video KYC coming in, with the e-sign coming in, uh, if the biometric comes in, that would be great. I think we may be able to do away with the physical verification also. With e-sign, you have done away with the wet signature. 
I think these are going to be the norms and we look forward to working in an environment where these things have become predominant and we are in a position to reach levels which uh, we were always doing it and which we were preparing ourselves for. So I think even if there is a little hit in the initial months when the uh, lockdown is there, we will be able to get back to business, business as usual, somewhere around August, September.